רגעה וגאה, ואת אוספת לאט את גופך. אנשים שפגשת, שהיו בשבילך, ובן רגע נשארת עם את היופי שלך, את הקסם שבך, לא תוכלי לחלוק עם כולם. הסתכלי מסביבך, תאהבי את עצמך, ושמרי את נפשך לעולם. Ellie on mute. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Ellie Edelman. I'm the director for Dallas for Jewish National Fund. I wanted to thank Teferet Israel uh, for partnering with us this evening and especially thank the co-hosts Fredel Shulkin and Hannah Lambert for all of your hard work for this evening. It really paid off. I wanted to also introduce our executive director of the Southwest, Reagan Weil. Feel free to give us a wave. And without further ado, um, before we start our program, I'll let you know, we will have a chat open. If you have question and answers, feel free to chat away and I'll ask your question. It's going to be a moderated discussion between myself and our matter expert this evening. Um, and before we get started, we have a special guest, uh, one of Texas's own favorite son, our CEO, Russell Robinson, born and raised in El Paso to kick our evening off. The story of Jewish National Fund, the story of the modern state of Israel is about ordinary people achieving extraordinary accomplishments. It's the story of Theodor Herzl. You know, the guy with the beard, his struggle to gather enough people to first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. He was only in his 30s, so you can really say he was our first JNF Future member. He hosted the Zionist Congress at a casino hall and had everyone wear formal attire, tuxedos and suits that he had rented for them so that the Zionist movement would have a winning image, despite how poor so many of the attendees were. Because Herzl, he needed to sell Zionism to the masses the same way we need to sell our dreams to people today. The talit that were put up on the walls as decorations would later become the flag of the state of Israel with our Star of David. Overnight, as the word of the First Zionist Congress spread, the Zionist movement grew. Today, because of us, Jane F. Future, college activists, teens, all of us, the movement continues. We are achieving extraordinary accomplishments. The story of Jewish National Fund is the story of May 14th, 1948. In the morning, the final draft of the Declaration of Israel's Independence was typed at the Jewish National Fund headquarters in Tel Aviv. And at 4.30 on a Friday afternoon, Israel's founders gathered at Tel Aviv Museum of Art and heard David Ben-Gurion read the Declaration of Independence. And at that very moment, 
founded the state of Israel for the Jewish people everywhere. It may not be in the Bible, but it was truly a spiritual moment. <laughs> Herzl and Ben-Gurion were ordinary people who were driven to take action, not just to be dreamers, but to be doers. At Jewish National Fund, we continue their spirit and take destiny yes. in our own hands today, as we have every day since our founding in 1901. At Jewish National Fund, hundreds of thousands of ordinary people achieving extraordinary accomplishments. We have planted 260 million trees throughout Israel, built 250 water reservoirs. We made dozens of Israeli parks handicap accessible and helped hundreds of Israeli youth with special needs join the IDF, integrating them into Israeli society. We are focusing on the north and on the south with comprehensive plans that include housing and job creation, infrastructure development, and we have helped move millions of Israelis to the Negev and Galil, which is 77% of the land of Israel. And we are preserving our history by investing in heritage sites in Israel that deal with Israel's independence experience and Zionist engagement here at home. We are creating tomorrow's leaders. We are educating our youth. We are instilling them the love of Israel across the United States, and throughout Israel, we are working together to make an impact on Israel's land, on Israel's people, and on the Jewish nation. There are enough dreamers dreaming and planners planning. There are never enough doers doing, and just a few who are bringing it all together. I invite you to join the Jewish National Fund family and the generations of Jews who have committed their time and philanthropy not to a project here and there, but to real action, real results, to a grand vision that we are realizing today. Join us, because now's the time. Join us, because Israel's future, our future, depends on you. Join us, because Israel's future, our future, depends on ordinary people just like you, just like me. Join us and do your part in fulfilling the Zionist dream. Together, we are the Jewish people. Together, we are Israel. Join us in building the land of Israel and strengthening the Jewish people everywhere. It's almost time for me to sign. Thank you so much, Russell, for joining us. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our favorite rabbi, Rabbi Zell. Thank you so very, very much. Um, Jewish National Fund ideally should come to our minds more than once a year in the Hebrew month of Shvat. Uh, when we speak about trees, trees come to mind every Shabbat because as part of our Shabbat service, uh, we have the uh, 92nd Psalm where we speak about a tzaddik, a righteous person who's likened uh, to both a tamar and then eras, both to a palm tree as well as to a cedar tree. And the question is, why these two trees? What is it about these two trees that are so special that uh, we say this is what a tzaddik is all about? And I'd like to suggest very briefly three possibilities why a tzaddik is both like a palm as well as like a cedar. Uh, the difference between the two trees is that a palm tree bears fruit, a cedar tree does not bear fruit. But that doesn't mean just because one's efforts don't always bear fruit, that doesn't exclude him from being a tzaddik. We do a lot of righteous works, a lot of righteous people. Sometimes it bears fruit, sometimes it doesn't, but there's still acts of righteousness. The second aspect is that both of these woods, the wood from the palm tree as well as the wood from the cedar tree, was used in the building of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem the wood from the cedar tree that was basically inside the walls were used uh, made of the cedar tree and carvings that were pretty much at the door were uh, from the uh, palm tree and uh, the two of them show us that when it comes to uh, trees and when it comes to a tzaddik it's not just enough to be a tzaddik from the outside where people see but tzaddik inwardly as well and finally the two words eres 
starting with an Aleph, Tamar, starting with a Tav. That's the first and last letter, both of them, of the Hebrew alphabet. That's what we're all about when we communicate from Aleph to Tav. There's probably been no better organization linked to Israel that has communicated to Jews over the ages, throughout time, than the Eres, the Tamar, and other trees as well from Jewish National Fund, Karen Kayem at Israel. I salute you and thank you for having this wonderful, wonderful Tubishvat gathering. And we go from uh, planting ideas to planting trees. Have a wonderful, wonderful, successful meeting. Okay. Two minutes, I'll be good. Thank you, Rabbi. Anna and Fidel. Hannah, I think you have to unmute yourself. Oh, there you go. Now I'm unmuted. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, I'm Hannah Lambert. And my partner is? Fredell Shulkin. Okay. It is my, it is our privilege to introduce to you a man who strengthens the state of Israel and Jewish identity through education. He is an esteemed veteran who served for 25 years in the IDF, including as a commander of educational units a key driver of the military's educational systems, an IDF Lieutenant Colonel in the reserve, and a leader in connecting the birthright Israel program to Israeli soldiers. He is a seasoned educator who is an executive director of the KKL JNF Education Division for three years is currently the KKL JNF Israel Emissary for Education in Florida, who during the course of a three decade career in the educational field has implemented training programs in Jewish and Zionist identity, Holocaust memorialization and Jewish leadership. And he is an articulate voice for Israel who hosted a weekly radio show broadcast Gali Sahal for 17 years um, on IDF radio and who is certified tour guide for Israel's Ministry of Tourism and for the Yad Vashem Holocaust Remembrance Center. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a creative educational entrepreneur for Israel and for the Jewish people, Zahara Velosky. Okay. Zahara? Welcome to our program this evening. I'm going to Thank take you. a wild guess that you're not from Texas. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? First, uh, thank you for the introduction and for uh, the invitation. I'm uh, very happy to be with you uh, this evening. And yes, my accent is not from Texas. Uh, I'm living now in Florida, but uh, I came from Israel to be in uh, JNF Israel Emissary, Karen Kayemet Israel, the Jewish National Fund. And uh, I grew up in Israel and all my career in Israel, 25 years at uh, the IDF. And uh, actually uh, I have the privilege to work all my career for the Jewish people and for the Israel society. And uh, always to empower and to strengthen the Jewish identity, the Israel identity, the Zionist identity, the leadership, the young leadership, and to connect them to Israel. Uh, so uh, here is, uh, you know, uh, this is my uh, uh, next step. Uh, that's very clear that uh, to be it here, to to be here from America and to do it through Israel and by hand with the lovely Jewish community here. Yeah, that's a pretty big jump to go from being a career officer of 25 years, being an army colonel to now being an emissary in the US, what, how did you get here? So it's a very nice uh, story because uh, when I uh, grew up all my, uh, all my uh, a career, I work at a green organization. Actually, it's not green organization, it's IDF, but our uh, uh, uniform were green, most of them. The Air Force is a blue, but uh, the Air Force is uh, like a different story, like the Navy, it's a different, uh, different IDF. But uh, I just uh, kidding, of course. Uh, so uh, 
the army uh, by slang, it's a green organization. So when uh, I had the opportunity to uh, work for Karen Kemet Israel Jewish National Fund to be the, the head of the education division there and uh, to do uh, something else for the next step, I thought for myself, I, I jumped from green organization to another green organization. But what I learned when I came to Jewish National Fund, I learned that JNF is more than the trees. And this is maybe I will go to yeah, tell you a little bit. Take us, take us down memory lane, because I'm sure that's how it all started. But how trees and the creation of Israel, tell us a story. Let me share my screen and uh, more than happy to share with you uh, the story. Wonderful. Here is my screen. Yes. So actually the story is uh, around 100, more than 120 years ago, the first Zionist Congress, 1897, uh, in uh, Switzerland, in Basel, Switzerland. And uh, Theodor Herzl uh, brought Zionist people, Jewish people, leaders from all over the four corners of the Jewish world uh, to first place. This is the first time after a long time that uh, Am Israel uh, started to feel together. But the main, the main purpose was to put the foundation stone, as Herzl said, to the, to the shelter of the Jewish nation. So five years later, uh, Theodor Herzl established JNF, Karen Kayamet Israel, and he established for one purpose, to build the homeland, to purchase the land and to build the homeland. And the Zionist leader asked Herzl, we haven't the uh, money to purchase the land. So he had an idea. Let's take the blue box, the Kupata Tzedaka, the Tzedaka box from every, every community and every synagogue. And let's dedicate one of them to Israel, to our homeland. And coin by coin, dollar by dollar, cent by cent, they uh, collect, collected uh, to purchase the land in Israel. And every purchase followed by the certificate, special certificate by the Golden Book. And it's written by the Golden Book. This is, by the way, authentic uh, picture from a famous person in the United States, 1944, and the, the president of United States, President Roosevelt, uh, when he came to Chicago uh, to visit the Chicago community, uh, he purchased his own uh, donation uh, to the state of Israel. And from those days, we started acre by acre uh, to purchase and to build our homeland. So how exactly did they decide on trees at the time? What did it have to do with the, the Ottoman Empire? Yes, uh, so the rules were you need to do something with the, with the land, okay? You can't uh, purchase any land without do something. But uh, there, were, there weren't enough uh, people to come. We need Aliyah and after Aliyah and bring more people. But uh, sometimes you purchase more land than the, the, you bring the people. So we started plant the trees to keep the land and to put our flag, authentic flag by plenty trees. And uh, tree by tree and acre by acre we purchase and we put uh, our sign and our famous sign was the uh, trees and actually the trees came to be became to be a forest and uh, today you can find cross Israel let's say 250 million trees that from let's say 120 years of Zionism or 120 years of trees but we are more than the trees. The trees served and the trees uh, helped to keep uh, our land. So here you can uh, see the first uh, purchase, uh, 1903. And from uh, 1903, actually two years after uh, JNF was founded, 
uh, we started to purchase and to build uh, a, a small cities, villages, community villages, and uh, step by step, uh, you can see at the Israeli map what happened. So do my eyes deceive me? It, it looks like this is the actual borders of what would become the UN partition plan. You're right, you're right. You can see at the left side, the partition plan. The partition plan from uh, November 29th, 1947. And at the right side, you can see the first map from 1903 that JNF Karen Kemet Israel just started to purchase the land and to put it and, and uh, uh, to plant the trees. So look here. Here is the Israeli map, Sea of Galilee, the Mediterranean Sea, Haifa Bay. And here you can see Israeli Valley and the uh, Lower Galilee, okay, and Hula Valley. And here, let's jump to the coast, the Israeli coast. Let's jump to the partition plan. You can see exactly all the blue color is the Jewish side. The, the brown, uh, yellow brown is the Arab side. And this is exactly the partition plan. So we can say that JNF structure and, uh, and paint the Israeli map till today. So it came um, and, and it gives Ben Gurion to announce Anu Machrizim Bazot al Akamat Medina Yudit Beret Israel, he Medinat Israel. We announced now that uh, we founded the State of Israel and it was May 14th, 1948, Friday afternoon. 15, uh, sorry, 11 minutes after the President Truman. The President of the United States, this is, uh, you know, today is uh, like a, a President Day, let's say. So we spoke about Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, now President Truman, uh, signed 11 minutes immediately after Ben-Gurion declaration that US, United States recognized uh, this declaration and uh, we continue hand by hand as a good friends actually all over the years and especially from that moment. Beautiful. So that's fascinating how the creation of the state of Israel came about, especially from something like a tree, which is something amazing um, even today. But if I flash forward to today, I think everyone can agree that Israel is facing a lot more difficulties than just land purchasing and you know reforestation. Um, beyond the security issues, I'm sure everyone here can tell me even what Bibi Netanyahu had for breakfast, but can you speak more about the domestic issues that are facing Israelis, especially living in central Israel, and the effect it's having on the country, especially for the future? And what's JNF doing about it? Yes, uh, it's very interesting that uh, actually Israel has uh, uh, two, let's say two countries, Medina Tel Aviv, the Tel Aviv country, because most of the people in Israel are uh, focusing and concentrating in Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv area, not only in Tel Aviv, or let's say between Tel Aviv and Haifa, Tel Aviv and Hadera, all over the coast, and uh, of course in Jerusalem. And what about the others? So if you look at the, the Israeli map, Israeli map uh, is not uh, only Tel Aviv, it's not only Gush Dan, it's not, not only, of course, the center is between Tel Aviv or Tel Aviv and Haifa or Ashdod, to Haifa, but what about the Negev? The Negev is 60% of the state of Israel. And the Galilee is more than 20% of the state of Israel. So JNF try to help Israel to balance and to our brothers and sisters in Israel uh, to move to the South with a high quality life, with uh, open space, with a lot of job opportunities, with uh, a lot of community, or let's say under the project community buildings and JNF. And when we are talking today beyond the trees, what JNF is involved, let's say 60% and more of the efforts of Jewish National, Jewish National Fund because of uh, uh, 
here, your lovely community is uh, community buildings, Negev and Galilee. And the uh, forestry and green innovation, it's really, really important to keep it. But it's around four to six percent of all our efforts. We keep all the forest from those days to today, for today and uh, for the next uh, future. We keep the open environment green and the uh, bicycle path and the uh, and the community forest uh, and more and more. But Jewish National Fund focus also water solution. Israel suffers from water uh, because the rain and the natural rain, let's say around 5% of the water supply that Israel needs. So what about the others? So we need, uh, we need a lot of creative ideas out of the box, like trees, like reservoirs, let's say 250 reservoirs across Israel to keep the water for agriculture, for, uh, for uh, 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 other, other uh, needs. And of course, for the living, this is uh, the best uh, essential, uh, essential uh, thing that everyone needs. R&D, uh, research and development uh, all over Israel. How you raise tomato, okay, in the Negev, in the desert, because the temperature uh, and uh, because there is no, not enough water, but the best tomato, the best cherry tomato, are we are we are raising actually in the Arava. In the Arava is the area between, let's say, in the Negev, uh, between uh, Elat uh, to Be'er Sheva, more or less, or to the Dead Sea, let's uh, say more exactly. Uh, more than Zionist education, heritage sites, disability and special needs, Disability and special needs, I, I give you a, you know, a personal perspective. I serve at the IDF and uh, uh, one, one uh, day I received a phone call from my commander and he asked me uh, to accept uh, to receive uh, a soldier with disability and special needs who volunteered to the army. And uh, he told me, listen, so it's not, uh, it's not, uh, Please think before you answer to me, because you need to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, tools together. You need to make a special elevator. You need to to, to make a special space, um, a big uh, big door, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need to invest a lot. And I told uh, my uh, commander, there is no question. I think the motivation of one will influence all my 250 soldiers and officers. And I write, but when I look back more than 20 years ago, when it was, it wasn't the project that uh, today JNF deal with special in uniform uh, a, a project like Gdolim Bemadim. Um, in special in uniform, more than 500 uh, soldiers that volunteer to the army, but influence, influence the Israel society, influence the army. And their uh, service are amazing. So I can say this is from my personal perspective as a Lieutenant Colonel, uh, as a commander, it was beautiful, beautiful memory from my army service. Nice. So here you can see, by the way, you can see all over Israel, okay, especially in the Galilee and in the Negev, the different projects that uh, JNF by the seven action areas, community buildings and, uh, and education and water, etc., etc., you can find all over Israel. Actually, uh, when every time I uh, uh, came back to Israel and uh, around any corner, I found, hey, this is JNF. Oh, this is another project of JNF. Or oh, this is, uh, wow, this is Be'er Sheva. What's happening in Be'er Sheva today? Very nice, very nice to know. So I guess in essence, you know, if I'm a young family in Tel Aviv with cost of living of New York City, middle-class income of $30,000, this is giving me an opportunity to move within Israel instead of leaving the country. Because a lot of these projects are creating jobs. Of course, this is a uh, YJNF try to think globally and locally and try to think uh, what exactly the individual 
as the community and Israel needs. And to see all the perspective and try to give the solutions uh, like area solution and not uh, any, okay, you need here a visitor center. Okay, let's see if we can uh, do it. No, the idea is quality life to move the people and to make the desert bloom and to, to make the people happy and to give them high quality and to give them the opportunity to, to, uh, to able to buy a house, an apartment. Uh, it's a, a lot of work and it's a work that we need to coordinate between a lot of people with the mayor and with the Israeli government, with the area, but here we need a vision. Then we need to take the vision to mission and to, you know, to goals and to achieve the goals. So I would love to, to, uh, to go back and give you an example that, uh, about Be'er Sheva. Why about Be'er Sheva? Be'er Sheva, it's a very nice story because we are talking about 4,000 years ago. And 4,000 years ago, Avraham, Avraham Avinu, um, uh, that uh, he never, he never know, knew that he is going to be Avraham Avinu, Avraham, our father, and the, the God, the Lord, choose him and ask him, go from your country, go from Mesopotamia, Iraq, okay, and go here near Syria, go across all over Israel. It wasn't Israel, yes, but it was actually not by name, but he told him, go to the land that I will show you. And Abraham didn't stop here in Zion or near Zion, near Jerusalem. You know why? Because Jerusalem wasn't exist almost 4,000 years ago. Uh, King David established uh, it only 3,000 uh, years ago. So a, ten, a, a, a thousand years later than Avram. So Avram continued to, to, uh, to go and he stopped where? In Be'er Sheva, here in the middle of the desert, in the middle of Israeli desert, here. I Look have at to ask Zohar, yes. yes. Why, why Be'er Sheva? Because you have to forgive me. I remember during my army service, this would be a place that we would get off the bus, use the restroom, get back on the bus and either go home or go down south to a lot or wherever and go to base. <laughs> I remember the same story. I remember the same story from uh, when I started my army uh, service. Uh, most of the bases in Israel, it's not a secret, uh, they're based in and located uh, in Dinegev. We have uh, open space there. We have a lot of uh, opportunity to, uh, uh, to uh, make an exercise and to practice, whatever. And every time we cross Be'er Sheva, we stop in the end of Be'er Sheva. Why? Coffee in and coffee out. It was a uh, ice cream Montana, whose name, I don't know if any one of you knows the Glida Montana, but it was very, very nice uh, ice cream. Uh, very bad coffee, by the way. But it only, it was, this is, this is my memory from Be'er Sheva, 30 years ago and back. And uh, today, Be'er Sheva is uh, under, let's say, kind of revolution. First, here is Be'er Sheva. Look at the map. Be'er Sheva is in the center, the capital of the Negev. Here is the Negev. You can see the borders, Sinai, between Israel and Egypt, okay? Sinai Desert. And here is the Arava between uh, Eilat Valley to the Dead Sea. Okay, this is the Arava. This is like a natural border, okay, between Jordan Kingdom and Israel. And here we return more or less to the natural border between, uh, between the desert and uh, you know, the regular place, let's say. 60% of the state of Israel here is Be'er Sheva. And look what's happened in Be'er Sheva today. Be'er Sheva decade and back, we are talking about 100,000 residents. Okay, now we are dealing with almost a quarter million, 250,000 residents, okay? What's happened during like a miracle during the last decade? So GNF, 
started to invest hand by hand with the mayor, Robik Danilevich, Karen Kayemet Israel, and the Israeli government, we challenged together the Israeli government, okay, let's invest here. Uh, and the uh, GNF um, helped to build Avraham Tent Visitor Center, Louder Employment Center to solve and to give the opportunities for jobs, not only for Be'er Sheva, for all over the Negev. Uh, Bet Eshel, heritage sites, uh, Be'er Sheva Lake and River, it's a great reservoir. And in the meantime, it's a great uh, place uh, to, for fun, for families, for park. Be'er Sheva Park and Amphitheater for 5,000 people. Can you believe that people from Tel Aviv are coming to show for one night where to Be'er Sheva. It's amazing. It's amazing to think because Be'er Sheva, Be Tel Aviv hasn't any amphitheater for 5,000 people. And the life and the quality life in Be'er Sheva, they are one of the high quality, highest quality all over Israel. And now we are dealing with another new project that we just put the uh, uh, stone foundation uh, for it is a GNF a global world Zionist village, education and technology. I want to show you a short video about this amazing uh, project. And this is a great opportunity also to take a look uh, about Be'er Sheva because uh, the video will show you what's happened in Be'er Sheva today and uh, very soon tomorrow. Imagine a conversation about Israel, global jewelry, the leaders of today, of tomorrow, with people from Demona, Denver, Kiryat Shimona, and Oklahoma. For the first time in Jewish history, Jewish National Fund is creating a conversation that will build bridges across generations, denominations, politics, and oceans direct from Beersheba in the footsteps of Abraham. The Jewish National Fund Israel Education and Technology Campus, a state-of-the-art village that will inspire Jewish leaders of all ages and backgrounds from all across the globe. A campus surrounded by sports fields, a 1,300-acre park, a 28-acre lake, an amphitheater, a 26-screen Cinematech, and Israel's largest mall. Be'er Sheva, a rich mosaic of people. Home to Jewish National Fund's Be'er Sheva River Park, JNF's Louder Employment Center, Ben Gurion University, and high-tech companies. An ideal location to make Jewish National Fund's vision come true. The campus will include an internship, innovation, and technology center, the first Zionist adult education center in the world, the southern campus of our semester abroad high school in Israel, top quality conference center facilities, study areas, a food court, restaurants, a synagogue, beautifully landscaped outdoor space, classrooms, and comfortable modern overnight accommodations for short and long. The Internship Innovation and Technology Center is critical to helping college graduates stand out from the crowd in this fund will use its vast connections with Fortune 500 companies to help young people. Okay. In learning beauty and greatness of the Jewish world. Alexander Mus High School in Israel is growing to 5,000 students annually. Expanding it to Be'er Sheva will help our youth learn, live, and love Israel, understand her challenges, grow as young Jewish leaders, and prepare them for life on college campuses and beyond. Join Jewish National Fund as we host the greatest conversation the global Jewish community ever had. Join us as we embark on a journey to build the first campus of its kind, the JNF Israel Education and Technology Campus, 
a campus that says, we believe in the future of global jewelry. In 1901, there was Theodore Herzl. In 1948, there was David Ben-Gurion. Today, there is you. So this is great, all the work that they're doing to try to help uh, a lot of the domestic issues in Israel. They've really revolutionized coming from 1901 with tree planting to today, all the work they're doing in the north and the south. But Zohar, there's so many issues that young Jews are facing in the US and, and across Europe as far as anti-Semitism and the BDS movement. Uh, what are we doing to help you know, young, young Jews uh, with their identity and relationship to Israel? This is a great question. I think in one world is education and two worlds is uh, educational leadership. And we need to build them as a leaders and to give them the education and to give them the opportunity to learn more about Israel. And this is exactly why JNF uh, bought a few years ago at Alexander Moss High School in Israel and also invest uh, a lot, a lot of efforts uh, for the next generation to bring them to Israel, to uh, give them a, a great time to learn about our history, our background, uh, to be connected and to come back uh, to their uh, college, to their campus and to be uh, better students and to give back to the community, to give back to their families and to be uh, with a full basket able to deal with any, any uh, issue about more than the BDS, about their Jewish life, about their uh, uh, about their uh, um, future, and about their environment, and to influence and to be a leaders. So let's take for example Alexander Moss High School in Israel, MHSI is based in Hoda Sharon, and in a few years in Be'er Sheva, the campus that you just saw, and uh, today we are bringing uh, around 1,500 students. Uh, to a full semester or mini semester or summer program for six weeks minimum to Israel. So this is a long-term, very influenced time that the students are, are learning um, a lot about the Jewish history, about their background, about how to be a leader, how to be a Zionist leader, and how to give back to the community and uh, with a lot of uh, tools. We have Frontier Israel for, uh, for college uh, students to come four months to Israel as a MASA program. We have alternative uh, break uh, during uh, June when they will come to the spring uh, uh, um, break and they will uh, do eight days in Israel. Of course, the Glit Beers, right? We are sending 70 buses a year uh, to Israel. And also we have some Bar Mitzvah and Mitzvah project, Bar Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah projects during the year of Bat Bar Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah, uh, and they can adapt and support and hand by hand learn and do for project uh, baseball in Israel, therapy, Reading uh, Center in the Arava, Chavat Grufit, Al Negev, Nachalat uh, Iran, and uh, more projects that uh, we have. We just need to, uh, you just need uh, to ask which project and how we can be involved. And we have a project and we have a program for any age, for any uh, year uh, and for anyone. Because GNF is Jewish National Fund, is your voice in Israel. And we try to bring the voice in Israel, but actually to bring the people to be the voice in Israel by themselves. And this is GNF and this is the reason why I am, as an Israel emissary, as a Lieutenant Colonel, joined to the GNF, it was, so natural for me because it's a green organization, but I learned that beyond the trees, we have such more. So you learn a little bit tonight about what is a little bit beyond the trees, but I think it's a very, very nice uh, hint what we have uh, to offer to you and uh, more than to be involved, to be part of, because it belongs to everyone. We just need uh, you and uh, everyone to be uh, a part of. Thank you so much, Zohar. I truly appreciate you joining us this evening and sharing all of your expertise. We're gonna open it up to some of the questions we've gotten. First one I've gotten is, 
have you personally observed Tu Peshvat? And what's your favorite action area or program that you're working on currently? Wow. Uh, first, uh, Tu Bishvat, uh, we have a lot of uh, ways how to celebrate Tu Bishvat, but I like, uh, I like uh, the Seder Tu Bishvat. Seder Tu Bishvat actually it came from uh, the Kabbalah rabbis, 16th century, that uh, they set in uh, uh, Tzfat, the holy city Tzfat, uh, and they thought how we can uh, bring much uh, uh, more love to, to Israel, uh, around the month of Shvat. So they made a custom, uh, Seder Tu Bishvat. Seder Tu Bishvat takes some fruit, of course, one of, minimum one of the seven species from Shivat Aminim. I like uh, the date and the uh, Tamar uh, and take uh, some wine. Every time is a good time to take a glass of wine. Uh, so Seder Tu Bishvat, it reminds you I think uh, Seder Pesach, four glasses. Why not to take four glasses here? White wine, red wine, a mix. And it's remind me the four seasons. Okay, so it's a great time uh, to, to honor, to bless, to thank. And uh, this is our homeland. And uh, of course, to plant a tree. To plant a tree, if I am in Israel, I go to plant a tree by my hands. I like the smell of the of the plant. I, I like the smell of the ground. And you know, to combine, it's to feel such so closer to the land, to the homeland. But also we have an opportunity here uh, to plant the trees. Uh, here, uh, you see behind me, uh, the forest is a virtual forest, but you can plant a real tree in Israel by JNF. So just follow uh, what you see at the slide, and uh, you can see you can see uh, how much nice is a uh, uh, Tu uh, opportunity and to plant a tree. Okay. And the other question was, what's your favorite action area or program that you work with? Uh, I will lie if I can say uh, education. <laughs> education. I involved with education, and I am uh, education Israel emissary. Of course, I'm Israel emissary for everything, but focus on education because I believe, uh, I believe that we need to adapt and to support our next generation, and to give them to give them as much we can. Uh, and when Israel became to one of their favorite or the most favorite, uh, or one of the, let's say uh, 10 priorities that uh, they have in their life, they will, they will go by themselves and they will connect their next generation. And uh, you know, it's a chain and I love it so much. This is actually most of my career. And I'm so happy to be here and there and to connect to Israel. So it's a great privilege. Okay, and our last question is, what do you miss the most about Israel since being in the US? Wow, uh, first is the, the food, the smell, the taste. And uh, you know, when you are in Israel, it's so natural, okay? You have all kinds of food that you want, okay? It's the, 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 the taste of the food. It's more than falafel, falafel, shawarma, Chinese, or, or any kind of food that you want, Israeli or not, because kibbutz galuyot, the people uh, made aliyah all over the years and brought with them the food. And uh, this is uh, one of the secrets. But also, I miss uh, the families, the familiar, familiar fa the family environment in the road. If I meet some, someone in Israel, okay, I never know him before, okay, I just speak with him, I can end the conversation, the first conversation, okay, thank you, my brother. He, he became to my brother, you know, <laughs> during the conversation. So this is the reason why we are like a big family and I miss it uh, so much. It's, uh, it's a very nice that uh, everyone is your brothers and sister and uh, and now I miss them from here, but I try to support them from here with you. Have you tried calling anybody your brother that you've met in the US? How did, how did that work? 
Yes, yes, but I need to be more polite and more carefully and, uh, you know, to be sure that he will react to me. Okay, you are for my family or not. Uh, I think that he is my brother, but if he will not react to me, okay, you are my brother. I am in trouble, maybe. <laughs> but if not, I try, you know, also I love, uh, I love the word dude here. Okay, you are my dude. It's more than the brother. It's a kind of, uh, okay. I know you, I know where you're from, and I love you. And, uh, you know, we are talking the same, the same, let's say, American-Israeli language. It's more than the Hebrew, Hebrew English. It's American-Israeli language. So we can talk together about, you know, politics, sports, weather, and what's happening in Israel, and how Israel deal with the COVID. This is not for tonight, but uh, good, bad, whatever. But uh, you know, in Israel, uh, everyone has minimum three opinions. But here is a one opinion, but uh, it's enough, but uh, it's very nice. Thank you. Well, it looks like that is all of our questions. Thank you again, Zohar, so much for joining us and sharing your expertise and giving us a little ride down memory lane with uh, the history of Israel and creation of the state. Um, I'm the first Dallas director in 16 years. And I'll be honest, when I joined JNF, I really didn't know more than the blue boxes and the trees. And in my mind, being an Israeli who served in the army and lived there as long as I did, I, I when I found out all the work that JNF was doing, it really touched my heart because it was a lot of the reasons why I left and came back to the US, not here nor there. Uh, so it's very exciting for me every single day that I get to wake up and be a part of this incredible work and help my brothers and sisters in Israel, because uh, truly the future is going to be in the north and the south. Um, so I encourage all of you, if you want to learn more, if you'd like to get be a part of JNF, we have plenty of opportunities. We have a young adult board. We have a board that works with our high school in Israel. Um, our campaign is one of the strongest in the country right now. We've managed to triple it in two years. So I say to everyone, feel free to reach out, join us. If you want to have a coffee, you just want to talk, whatever it is, I uh, would love to meet you. And thank you so much again to Hannah and Fidel for all of your hard work for this evening. Really, you deserve a huge round of applause. Um, before we end, I will let Hannah have final words. You have to un unmute. It's been a privilege to learn JNF Beyond the Tree. It really has taught me so much today about what's going on. And I think that all of us have learned and feel so close. I have two granddaughters in Israel right now. And one is on uh, the... Uh, a fellow for the Masa, and the other one uh, graduated from uh, the University uh, Batalel Akiba, uh, Batalel Academy of Art and Design, and lives in Israel. So um, part of my heart is there, and I remember J and F as a little girl in the blue box. So this is really a beautiful evening. I thank you for all of your hard work in putting this beautiful program together. It really has touched us. It's been a chance for us to feel connected in a way that we weren't before. So thank you and all of the people who joined us tonight. We're so glad you had the opportunity to hear what, what we have going on in JNF and in Israel. You're so welcome to be here today. I thank Rabbi Zell for his wonderful words at the beginning. And of course, Zahar, you are an educator. That's who you are. And that's what you did tonight. You educated. And uh, again, thank you to you, Ellie. You've inspired us all. And it's been a pleasure working with you. So welcome everybody. And I'm so glad you had the privilege of being here tonight. Uh -huh.